Today is going to be a little bit different. It's not going to be a vlog, but yet it's going to be a tutorial of how I make a wedding film, basically in the editing process. And this isn't really for everybody, and I completely understand that. This is meant for, one, the editors that I hire in the future, two, the brides who want to see kind of the process behind the scenes and what goes into crafting your film, and three, for the extremely bored people who may have a slight interest in this, or this would really be good for putting you to sleep. I don't know. So before we kick off things, I'm only recording this bottom monitor, and that's where I'm going to have everything displayed at. Normally, my workflow I would have all of the video files up top, but I'm kind of using that for the capturing software and there's no good way to piece everything together in YouTube. So first off, before we even get started with Premiere Pro and the wedding film, I kind of want to show you exactly how I organize the footage. And this wedding is really simple because I had two primary cameras. I had a GoPro as a C cam in case I needed a wide angle shot for the ceremony. That's a long story. My camera broke and you'd be surprised you can actually get away with a GoPro wide angle if you crop it in and color correct it right to where it matches the other footage. Anyways, that's a long story. I'll teach you how to do that one day. But for now, here is how I organize the footage. You can see here that I have the two main cameras, which is the a7 III and the a7S II. And then it's the drone, and then GoPro, the H4N. So the H4N, which is this little audio recorder, records all the sound during the wedding day as far as inputs and outputs. For example, if there's a soundboard at the ceremony or the reception, I can plug this directly into it and get the sound. Now, this thing's kind of sketchy to me. I always like to have a thousand backups of audio because I'm scared I'm not going to get it. So Tascam 1 is a DR10L, I think that's what it's called, and it's I'm actually wearing it right now. And the other one, which is over there, records another standalone person. So for example, the setup would be Tascam 1 would go on the officiant and Tascam 2 goes on the groom. Then the H4N will record the soundboard or whatever input output device I can get, or it gets set on a podium. But before we start, once again, I get asked this question a lot, Aaron, why don't you use a MacBook? Why do you have a PC? Ooh, a PC. Well, it's because I can get some top of the line specs, uh, specs, I mean hardware, that's super fast and it lets me have an efficient workflow. So for this computer alone, and this is about to go over everyone's head, um, even mine. I'm running a, a 12 core processor at 4.5 gigahertz, not 4.5, 4.17. Um, we got 64 gigabytes of memory, which is super crucial for Premiere Pro. And same with the CPU, but memory really is everything. And then the GPU, which for some reason is running, oh, it's because I'm recording the screen, is running at 40%, got eight gigabytes of dedicated GPU memory. It's an RTX 2080. So there we go. First step, of course, is to open up Premiere Pro. Um, Premiere Pro is uh, a curse and a blessing. I love how complex you can get within Premiere Pro, but I also hate the, the bugs, the inconsistencies. It's just ridiculous. So now that we have a blank slate and we have a clean Premiere Pro, it's time to import the footage. And the easiest way that I've always found to do this is just to command all right here, unclick project files and then move it on in and this is going to take a second. I'm going to enjoy this nice generic sparkling water that is orange flavored. No product endorsements unless there is payment of course. Here we go. So now that our project has all the raw footage in place I like to go through each camera folder and label it by color of what the frame rate is. That way, whenever I'm editing, I know what I can slow down and what I cannot. So here we go. The best way to do this is to come down here, click on a name. So that way it's sort of in order. And I forgot to format the SD card when I was filming this wedding. And it starts at 182, which is really no big deal. And then we come over here to list view and we sort by frame rate. And here we have 60 frames per second on a almost the majority of the clips. So I'm going to highlight all of those that are 60 frames per second and label them as a, I don't know, let's go, uh, let's go teal. The darker the blue, the more I can slow it down. So I know that teal is 60 frames per second, which means I can go put it down to 40%. And then I go and do that for the next camera. So once again, I come down here, label it as name. I don't think you have to do that at all now that I'm thinking about it. One extra step. 
put it by frame rate, here we have 120 frames per second on a lot of clips. In fact, it's the majority. And of course, this is shot with the A7 III, which allows me to do that. So I highlighted all my clips, right click label, and then come down to blue. So now dark blue means I can slow it down. We only have two cameras, so we're completely finished with that. I know the drone's going to be in 30 frames per second, and I know the GoPro, which filmed the ceremony, and sometimes there's a time lapse in there, is going to be 24 frames a second. I don't have a third camera. Usually I'd have a third camera, but it broke and it was unavailable for this wedding day. So that makes it super easy for the calling process. From here, I like to make a new bin called Sequences. And I live by sequences, and a sequence is basically different timelines. And the first thing I'll do is go to a ceremony clip that's in 4K. So technically you could just take the GoPro. Um, so there are a couple of time lapses in there. So I can take the GoPro, drag them down, and it automatically takes it into a sequence. And this is your wedding. As you can see right here, it made a sequence. And I like to drag and drop this into the sequence and label it ceremony precinct because we haven't synced anything yet. So rename it. If you hear that, I live next to a train. I know I didn't know that when I signed the lease, but here I am. I actually ignore it, but I just thought about it for audio. Ceremony pre-sync. So now that that is done, um, that's the base angle, um, which means I can always fall back to it. I like to add in the other angles and the audio. So we'll come over here to A7 III, put this back into gallery view mode. Okay, so the one that's 16 minutes, um, of course. So I'm guessing, yep, and that fills the timeline. So that's the other angle. And then I like to put the moving angle, which happened to be the A7S II on this one. I probably should have used the A7 III now that I think about it, but it's, it's too late now, of course. So there we go, I found it. I finally found it, that took way too long. But here, I just dragged that on top right here. You can see here that I filmed everything in 120 frames a second, which will help out whenever I'm editing the final highlight film and it'll give me more variety and shot styles to choose from. So whenever I record audio, I always say what it is at the very beginning so it makes it super easy to organize the, foot, the audio. So for here, I can tell this is 40 minutes long. Check, check, check. Groom mic. So that is uh, obviously the groom mic. So I'll just throw it down here. I actually like to put it second and put the efficient first. I'm sure that's the efficient. So now that we have all of the tracks laid out, I guess I could throw in the H4N. I don't think there was anything of necessity that needed to be used with H4N, but I'm just gonna throw it in anyways. I have all of my tracks into the ceremony timeline and I use this third party plugin which is worth the $200 called Pluralize. And what Pluralize does is all you got to do is click it. It's just an extension in Premiere Pro and what Pluralize does is syncs all of the tracks so I don't have to worry about anything. So look how easy this is. Just hit synchronize. And what it's doing is taking it to a third party program and syncing it up and then importing it back into Premiere Pro. Watch how it just, just puts everything together. Boom, there it is, completely done. No need to worry about diving into audio clips and trying to sync things up. It's finished. It's really that easy. So now I'll slide everything into place right there highlight everything and put it to the very beginning. So now we have um, all three tracks synced up completely in place for editing. But before we do that, there's some that have been recorded in 4K and some recorded in 1080p. For example, the top layer, as you can see, was recorded in 1080p. So we're just gonna scale it to the frame size, just like so. And if we go through each one, we can see that they're all scaled up to 4K because that's the timeline that we started with. And now we have three tracks all synced up. But how do we make this even easier? But if you highlight all of these video tracks and then you click Nest, what it does is makes it into a multi-cam file. Now this makes it so easy. So ceremony nested if I can spell nested 
So now it's just one track. But Aaron, where did the video files go? Easy. You just right click on the nest here to multi camera. You enable it. And so now you're like, well, Aaron, I still don't see the video files. It's right here in this button. And if you don't have this button, you can go over here to the plus sign and drag and drop into the little toolbar here. Boom, there you have it. Now you have all three ceremony camera angles. And what this allows you to do is go through the playhead and while it's playing, and I'll just solo a track just to you know have a little bit of sanity. While it's playing, you can go in and live, cut between different angles. I know this is awful cutting, but you know, I'm just showing you the point. So whenever you stop, it saves all of your cuts. And if you make a mistake, you can easily come in here and adjust it to however you want to. So there we go. Now that the ceremony is nested and complete, what I like to do is go through every A roll, which is if you know film, you have your A-roll, which is your main line. It's usually your narration piece or the main content that you're filming, plus your B-roll, which is the added on film. And what I like to do is go through every A-roll sequence and sync it up and get it ready for multi-cam editing. So all I have to do in the highlight film is just throw each multi-cam into the highlight film and while I edit, choose which angles I want. So with this wedding, there were interviews and I'm super thankful for the interviews because it allows me to tell the story more personally and just give it more life. And I recommend to any bride that has a videographer to use some kind of audio source, whether it's letters, whether it's custom vows, whether it's interviews, whether whatever it can be, it just helps to tell the story better. So with this wedding, there were interviews and I'm gonna go close this out and find the interviews. Okay, that took way longer than it had to because Pluralize evidently did not like the frame rates that I was shooting in, which I don't blame it. I was shooting in 120 frames a second and 60 frames a second and trying to sync that up with whatever hurts audio, I'm sure it was a pain. So I actually had to go in and sync all of that manually. I was singing Pluralize's praises and yet you just watched me sync the entire four interviews I had from scratch. But anyways, so now that we have the A-roll complete, it's time to make two sequences. One of those is gonna be the highlight film and the other is going to be the cold footage or the sorted footage that we gather from the raw footage. So let's go ahead and make the highlight film sequence. First, we're gonna go over here to sequence, of course, and then I have a preset, but I'll tell you the settings. It's exactly like DSLR 1080p, but it's in 4K and it's 235 aspect ratio, which gives you that nice cinematic look. Basically, you know those black bars that you see on videos and the movies or whatever, that's basically replicating it, but without the black bars. And I could go on to a whole explanation of why we do it this way instead of just physically putting black bars on a 1080p timeline. But anyways, here we go, 4K, 235, and 23.976 frames per second. We're going to label this highlight, if I can type, film, boom. So there we go, new sequence, and that's a fresh highlight film, completely empty. So now that we have made all of the sequences, it's time to go to the cold footage sequence, go into each clip and make in and out points, dragging it into the cold footage timeline. So all we have to do is place each cold piece of footage into the timeline and this makes things so easy because now instead of going through each clip and figuring out what it is you have a whole thing laid out organized by each event within the wedding it just makes things way easier and you're kind of crafting the highlight film rather than sorting through the footage picking things out sorting through the footage picking another piece out trust me this saves a lot of time plus when it comes time to make your documentary edit, which is what I offer, and it's com the combined raw footage placed into a cool timeline where you can see the whole day played out, you've basically already made it. So yeah, that's basically my process. So now we're gonna go through each clip, placing in and out points of what I think would make great footage. So that was a pretty, pretty decent shot, and I'm gonna label, I'll throw this onto the cold footage, I'll drag both the video and audio, 
and I'll name this establishing shots. And I will do this for the entire day of the wedding. So this process right here is what takes up probably 80% of my time is going through the footage and sorting it. Once I have all that footage sorted, it's pretty easy to drag and drop and pick and choose the elements that you want within the highlight film. So now that we have all of the sorted footage, it's time to go back into the highlight film, if I can find it over here. There it is. And I'm gonna stack these on top of each other, just like so. I'm also gonna put the ceremony and all of the other A-roll onto this little timeline right here. I can pick and choose exactly what I want into the final highlight film. like this behind the scenes and you want to see more in the future just let me know I love doing these kind of tutorials and also mad respect to the people who actually make tutorials on video editing so yeah thank you so much guys for watching I enjoyed making this stuff and if you want to see more hit subscribe and if you want to see this full wedding video click the link down in the description